Activation code required. Access granted. Warning. Evacuation sequence activated. We're back. Welcome to the bunker. Get your are, fucking are, haircut, you goddamn oh, hippie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are Jesus Christ. Yes, oh we God, are live. Oh, fucking. Oh, my fuck. Oh, you should have seen. You, you didn't do the normal countdown. Anyway, how are we doing, folks? I haven't done a countdown in like a year and a half. <laughs> oh. Kayla, get the so, fuck out of the bunker. We got. You're on. Uh, did you close the door already? You, you locked her in the fucking bunker, didn't you? I might have. God damn it. Anyway. So, how are we all doing this week, folks? Um, and yeah, uh, yeah, so I've been on a, an ancient aliens binge. What the fuck is an ancient alien? It's an ancient, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, an ancient alien binge. I like the ankh, though. But, you like the ankh? Finally, you're here. Sorry, oh, I was eating some did, cheese puffs. Did you slam the bunker door on your face again? Hey, shut up. It's not oh. that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, so you're on an Incan aliens bin. On an Ankin aliens bin. Yeah. yeah. Like Ankin? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, okay. that, that, that's, cool, cool. A, that's the one. Do you know what's awesome? What? I have gotten Kayla to the point where she can't even watch that show. <laughs> oh, uh, so some of I watch for the laughing factor. Uh, some of it is actually kind of interesting. I like, uh, I think, reading between the lines of everything's a fucking alien, which, yeah, whatever. Um, I like ancient culture. Yeah, okay, so see, that's one of the main reasons that right. I watch it is because I like the ancient culture. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've actually recently decided I'm switching to, like, In Search of Egypt and stuff like that <laughs> because at least then it's actual factual shit and not just no, it's the fact that, a fucking yeah. alien. I love ancient culture, uh-huh. but I hate the fact that they take every ancient culture and say they didn't do it. Aliens did it. Right. Yeah, honestly, they rip apart everybody's belief systems and they tell them how fucking full of shit they are. Like, that's the way that it goes down. Like, they were talking the other day on there about uh, uh, dance. Uh, don't, 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 don't spoil it for me. I'm only on season okay. five. Right. No, go okay. ahead. I don't, I don't give a shit. No, 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 no. I'll catch okay. up to it. It's okay. You'll catch up to it. In two weeks. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. The thing is, that show is so repeated. Oh yeah, they go over the same cultures over and over. And I mean, I I've got them memorized now. But what I'm doing with it is, when I catch a key word or a, a key topic that I want to delve into more, then I will Google search it and look for all the PDFs. That way, yeah, okay, if some of it might not be true. And it probably isn't. It's was written by some jackass. But I've got, like, I don't know, three or four different viewpoints on it. Um, and, like, Socrates. Uh, you know, all the ancient philosophers. I've got their actual writings downloaded. Uh, da Vinci. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. And that's where Warehouse 13 is so cool. Because we've we've also been watching Warehouse 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... The crossover here, looking at yeah, the crossover. Yeah, there's a lot of crossover, like Paracelsus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, he's a ruthless piece of shit. Okay, have you gotten to the Coral Castle um, episode yet? Maybe. 
Okay, do you, you know Which what the Coral, Coral Castle is? Which one is Okay, so the Coral Castle was the one that, that uh, Ed single-handedly built Yeah. in the middle of... Yeah. Ed know. did? Yes. Okay. Good <laughs> job, Ed! Way to go, man! <laughs> no, really, fuck! Like, he did. So it's it's considered one of the only... Is that the one where Ed... Major... No. Eric, I told you, Ed is his fucking self-starter. Right. That man can go forever. He did put you sober. Yeah, good job, Ed. <laughs> Oh, he so, didn't even need alien help. Like, wow. Right? Friend. But the aliens did. Oh, my God. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. But I, I can't remember the other place, but there's another place where Fuck you, uh, that's people funny. built it during the day and the angels of the Lord came down and built it during the night. It was a 24-hour process. Mm-hmm. But the angels were really aliens. No, um, no. But, yeah. The, the, the Coral Castle was built in like the 19, between the 1920s and the 1950s. Oh, um, and Florida. it was built by that, that was Florida. guy uh, that Home, was a home, Latvian yeah. Ed of like um, that was Homestead, Florida. Yeah, that Ed, that Ed, yeah, that yes. Ed. Uh, yes. And all he did it was a real <coughs> frail, short guy, and all he did it with was uh, like a three-piece wood tripod and was lifting like twenty-ton fucking rocks, and yeah, it's still there. Yeah, it's it's one of the only megalithic structures of modern day. And he did it with a tripod. And yep. he supposedly did it 100% by himself. He claims he did all by himself. And, and then, he would only work when people weren't watching him. But here's the key. He's also done a lot of study and research into uh, magnetic. Electromagnetic Electromagnetics. Fields. So did he actually lift them with electromag- some kind of electromagnetic <laughs> device that he built? Probably. Why? Why wouldn't he? Well, no, but why couldn't... Okay. That's my problem. Mm-hmm. All these guys sitting on here saying that it's not possible for them to have built the pyramids. Right. Not one of them actually knows how fucking actual engineering go- it works. Mm-hmm. And how basic engineering can move a 30-ton fucking object with force. Like a rock. Yeah, (laughs) with force. And the only reason that I say that this one really interests me, okay, and that I believe that there's some other factor involved in that I think he was Russian, too, wasn't he? No, he was uh, Lafayette. Oh, no, no, Latvian. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Um, Latvian. So, the only reason that this one super interests me is because the man himself was a sickly, frail man, okay? Very. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Super freaking intelligent, though. Super freaking smart. Yep. And well, the way and the shaping. You know why? Because he didn't go through the American education system. He went through the <laughs> Latvian <laughs> education right. system. Yeah, no joke. Um, but it's the way that the the blocks are set, and mm-hmm. it's also the fact that they are made of limestone, so it's not a hard rock. Not in the same way. That's why they call it the Coral Castle, because it's all limestone. Yeah. Okay? So, limestone, yes, is lighter than, like, granite or anything like that, and it's more pliable than granite and stuff, but to actually have a structure in limestone that lasts the test of time without Mm. having giant fractures in it and stuff is super hard. Yeah. So, it just interests me, because I'm like, well, how do you actually do it? So he would have had to have a lot of experience in architecture? Architecture and in... uh, Engineering. Engineering, and also he would have had to have had a lot of experience in rock masonry and blasting effects and everything else. Yeah. Woodshop. Now, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, they say it's not possible to move one of those blocks from the pyramids or do what he did with just a tripod pulley system. Right. But I've watched 70-year-old farmers lift a round bale into a high hayloft with four pulleys by themselves. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah, true. Yeah. And so yeah. a round bale is usually about a ton. Uh-huh. Usually. Yeah. A thousand pounds, yeah. Now that's four pulleys. Two yeah. top, two bottom. All right. So if you have a tripod of six pulleys, three top, three bottom, then you should be Legitimately, able to- you should be able to lift around ten tons. Without breaking a sweat. Now they had 18,000 slaves <laughs> building a pyramid. Right. Friend, and they were breaking a sweat. 
So let's pick this apart, not that part. So you, you have the ancient Sumerian text. Okay. And okay. Have, what? Nothing. Nothing. Let's go. No, spin it let's, up. let's dive into this because this is my like fucking. Okay, go, go for it. You have the ancient Sumerian text. And well, no, that's that's my problem. Is and to me the Anunnaki, which is the the key around what the ancient Sumerians talked about. The Anunnaki were not alien. No. They were gods. I, I don't believe um, in gods or aliens. Well. I think they were porn stars. And I yeah. think everything we found of the Sumerian text <laughs> is porn mags. <coughs> That's where porn hub came from. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I, I, I said that wrong. I do believe in aliens. I do believe that there's alien species. Absolutely. However, I don't believe in the ancient astronaut theory. I do not believe that aliens come here and they abduct people and they harm people and they do all this crap. I don't believe in aliens in the same way that most people Believe in aliens. Okay, well, probing is real. Okay. But it's our fault. How? We sent them our address. Oh, no shit. A picture of us naked. And, we're literally a dick pic. Uh-huh. And Trip porn K, music. Corn porn over. music. Corn over. Okay? Yeah. yeah, like, we did uh, um, a Tinder call. We really did. We, know. we asked them to come here. We sexed them. Yeah. We did. Like, uh-huh. yeah. we, we did that. Uh-huh. Yeah. It is all our fault. So, I, you know, and, and uh, I disagree with you on the abduction part. I do believe abductions happen. Do the numbers that the claim happen? No. Because I think some of them are psychiatric. I do think some of them are um, past traumas in their own human life um i think betty and barney hill happened for example because how did they come up with a zeta reticuli diagram years before zeta reticuli was even discovered in the same way a lot of people came up with a lot of things before they were actually discovered by scientific community actually can i put a uh i don't know if it's a new spin but i've never seen anything about it what's that i think they were abducted but I think they were abducted because they were an interracial couple. And that's a very... That's a very... If you're an outside source watching our history that's happening right in yeah. front of you, and then you see two people who aren't supposed to be together get together, right? you're going to want to know what's different what's about that. What's different them. about this couple? And that's a very good point. That's a, a very plausible point. Uh, you know, and, and it's the same thing as when abductees talk about they went out and got a nose ring or they got a, a, a new tattoo. They get abducted within a couple of days of that, and that is the focus of the abduction. Well, okay. No, the tattoo thing, that's sepsis. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a drunk in night in Vegas. Yeah. Like, come on now. For, um, no, like, honestly, they're, like it lines up with other people who got a tattoo and... They got sepsis because they didn't take care of it properly. Oh, yeah. And for an, then they start ended things. up hallucinating. Mm-hmm. I know, like when, so like I ended up with sepsis from a job. So for an, and I hallucinated like freaking crazy. Right. So what uh, so other things that cause hallucination is carbon dioxide poisoning. We know that. Mm-hmm. Um, sleep paralysis. We know that. So if you want to take the counter side of do do do, yeah, do abductions happen, check the yeah, check the monoxide levels of the house. Yeah. Um, do you have sleep paralysis? You know, most people know what that is, and most people would know if they had it or not. If they if they if they're prone to it. Um, and so for people that have never heard of sleep paralysis, it's a real easy Google search. But it, it's basically when your mind wakes up before your body can move. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. So basically, your mind can actually be prone to hallucinations because uh, it goes into kind of like a panic mode because you're frozen. Your 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 body can't move yet because you're not fully awake. There was a <coughs> demon movie in the last Hill three House. years. Was it Hill House? It was Hill House. Friend, that was like it, it concentrated on that real hard. Yeah. yeah. And you know that's an explanation for succubi, incubi. Uh, uh, again, demonic possession uh, and, and other things, because your mind 
produces. I think your probably, mind always fills in the blanks. I, well, yeah, it fills your in the blanks. And in the I blanks. think when your mind panics because your body can't move, it goes to your worst fear. Uh, so you know, you just watch. I don't know, Ancient Aliens or a Willy Stryber movie or a Fire in the Sky, and you went to bed. Your mind might go to the alien thing. And oh my God, now I've been abducted. I'm gonna go watch Fourth Kind tonight. But yeah, you know. Yeah. Possibility. So let's talk about the moon landing. Real quick. Oh, we talked about that well, last week, a couple weeks ago, <laughs> briefly. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> you look at the the conspiracies of we faked it, yada yada yada, um, or the whole moon landing was fake. Why would we fake it? Um. To say we got there first. What's the I matter? mean, like honestly, if if uh, back then it did back matter. Back then it really really mattered. You that think was, of who that fight was between, was between and what us, was going on down here. It was between us and Russia. Um, and you're right in line with the missile Cuban missile, or Cuban missile crisis. And everything right. else, you want to prove that you're the superpower. You're in the middle of a cold war. You mm-hmm. want to prove that you're better and that you shouldn't fuck with us because we can do this and you can't. Capitalism wins over communism. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was a, that was a huge win for us. It really was. But what do you think about the theories, moving on, of alien bases on the dark side of the moon? I think it's bullshit. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just don't see it. I don't see them taking that much effort into building a base that we could find. Because all it would take for us is to do exactly what we did in Apollo 13. Right. Which is slingshot around the moon. And go, oh my god, there's an alien base! (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Or in Armageddon, which we also slingshotted around the moon. Right. Or in any uh, fucking movie where there's a disaster near the moon. We slingshot around slingshot around the moon. Yeah. Friend, like, it wouldn't take that much to actually find it. You send out a satellite just past the moon. And take a picture. Done. The base is found. Or a drone. Oh, wait. We can't take drones in space. And the thing is, now we are getting into where space is capitali- capitalism. Mm-hmm. Because we're, we're privatizing it. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's smart? Yes. <laughs> I think it's the only way we can advance. Do you think- Our countries are too poor to actually get anything done. They really are. We, they can't afford to pay these uh, very salaries. intelligent people the outrageous salaries that they're being offered. For and and without being able, like, and not be able to justify it to their people. You, okay, Whereas so these the billionaires do not have to justify and, and that's shit. The thing. Yeah. So the taxpayers are looking at this, and let's like, say you take one engineer. And that one engineer is making $280,000 a year. Right. Okay? Now, think about how many of those engineers it's going to take to build a freaking rocket. Okay? So now you got a group of 20, 30 engineers mm-hmm. that are all making two hundred plus thousand dollars a year out of the taxpayer's pocket. Okay? Right. There's a big issue out of the taxpayer's pocket because that's how much infrastructure, how many roads, how many schools could be getting these grants, different things like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if you take an eccentric billionaire, and he says, "Ah, I'll pay these twenty engineers two hundred eighty million dollars, or two hundred eighty thousand dollars, or whatever the hell it is, a year," right? And they can work on it, and that's not coming out of the taxpayer's pocket. That's actually going into the tax pot. There's a whole different aspect and, and spin on that. Okay, so when NASA sent up or started sending up. Um, rockets Mm -hmm. everything was handled on paper first everything was made sure that it worked everything was made sure that there was no margin for error when they built these rockets right because there couldn't be a margin for error because they didn't have the money to build 200 of them for anyone wanting to look into this a little bit more check out elon musk's return to space on netflix Netflix. um but 
when he started Mm -hmm. and he decided he was going to bring the boosters back. Right. They built an engine and launched it. They did this 81 times. And another one. Because it kept blowing up. Because it kept blowing up. Yeah. They did it the opposite way of NASA. NASA can't do it that way. But because of that, the price of launching went from $100,000 to $4,000. To $4,000. It costs us $4,000 to get an astronaut into space now versus $200,000. Because they save the boosters every time. Okay. Friend, it, However, it, how much did it cost to get there? It cost the amount of, you know, sending that many rockets to actual space. <laughs> but now that they figured out exactly how to do it, they're from tuned. now on... Oh, no, they fine-tuned it. It's right. already done. $4,000 to send them up there. They are doing regular trips up there in the Falcon 9s. Okay. Friend. Yeah, because they can reuse it over and over again. Yep. Yep. Um... I, I I do think improvements can still be made. Oh, absolutely. You're never I would like them I, w- I would like to see Elon go back to a shuttle instead of a um pod. But again, I I don't have his money. He does. Right. So, but I I think more money can be saved go- moving to a shuttle. He's listening. Probably. Hey, Elon, go Friend. back to a shuttle. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is not going to help him with us. that. We can, we can actually, do, anyway. we can actually do a bunker episode watching the Earth from space. No, that would walk. No, fuck that. Okay, I, I, I'm never going to space. I can't go not to space. Why not? I'm a fat guy. <laughs> I won't be able to see anything. Everyone thinks it's just going to float around. I would suffocate in my own titties. <laughs> I would lose the rest of my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> we all have issues that make it impossible for us to go yeah, to space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, send one of you guys. Right. Um, <laughs> send one of you guys. Hey, okay. One of our listeners. Uh, our listeners will go. Okay. All right. um, okay, getting back to Samaria. Yep. Um, I, you know, I, I had a chat with uh, one of the ancient aliens guest guys. Uh, <clears throat> um, and I asked him point blank, you know, uh, so you honestly think your personal opinion aside, or your your personal opinion, and not saying it on the show, that you think all ancient gods and all deities throughout history are all really extraterrestrial. And he said, yeah. Uh, but the caveat to that is something created the aliens, so there is a supreme being. And is that what, you know... And it, that struck me because if you going back to Dante Centauri, that's pretty much what he said. Uh, it, it, you know, eons ago, there was a creator goddess that created the aliens. And she created us as well. The ancient pagans that were on Earth actually worshipped the same goddess as many of the alien races did. Now, with that, there's always, you know, there's got to be a balance of good and evil. We'll call it Satan and God or um, <coughs> Satan and Allah or, you know, there, there's always a bad guy and a good guy. There, mm-hmm. Satan and Wayne Gretzky. Huh? Satan and Wayne Gretzky. Absolutely. Satan, Satan can't, it, you know, the ice kind of melts when Satan touches it. So that's how he fucks up Wayne Gretzky. Right. Um. <laughs> anyway. Um. Uh, so, is there a supreme being? Are we going to go to hell because the supreme being doesn't like us? Yes. <laughs> no. Oh, never mind. I, no. <laughs> you know, I, I don't believe in no damn hell. Now, Ooh. is it tied up with a quantum? Is it, is it a quantum realm and it's really hot there and they call that hell? Maybe. Come on, come on, come on, quantum expert. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Just because you don't believe in hell doesn't mean it doesn't exist. No, absolutely not. Friend, so, like... Oh, hell exists. Yeah. Hell exists. Okay. We're fucking living in it. Oh, Kayla! Hey, <laughs> I'm serious, <laughs> man. I had to wake up every fucking morning and go to work. That's hell. Mm-hmm. I got to do all of this bullshit to make hey. it through life. That's hell. 
Like, come on. You know what the best part about that is? Uh. According to over half of the world's population, no, they're somewhere worse. No, well, yeah. Like to see it. <laughs> I'm Somalia. probably going to. Somalia. Uh, okay. Even they think they're somewhere worse. Okay. And you know what? America, I like... America is hell. Yeah. Um, no, that's what they think. There is an old... So, when you say Somalia, mm-hmm. I, I know what your experience, like some of your experience mm-hmm. in there, and you're talking about the old adage, war is hell. I, there yeah. is, but there is an, an old quote from MASH that I really like, and it's okay. from Hawkeye. Right. Um, and he says, war is not hell. Hell is hell. Friend. And he asked the, the old pastor from MASH, he says, Father. McKay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Who goes to hell? Well, I believe sinners go to hell. Right. Okay. So, hell is hell. In war, friend, who dies? Kids die. Mm-hmm. Friend, um, innocent bystanders die. Hell. Pretty much everyone inside of a war, except for a few generals and the leaders of the countries, are innocent bystanders. Therefore, war is in hell. War is worse. Yeah. Friend, and that's a good way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Friend, it brings into perspective how bad that can be. And also brings into perspective that maybe hell isn't the hellscape that we created throughout our generations. Right. But a place to learn from what we did in this life. Mm-hmm. Friend, to eventually get to our everlasting peace. Mm. You never know. Or to the next life. <coughs> what? What are you going, mm, about? I'm just thinking. <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking about? Hell. Huh. I've always told Cole. Okay? What she's going to wear. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, because I've always told Cole that I'm going to hell. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. If it is strictly based off of what the Bible tells you you can and cannot do, I already have a ticket to hell, and there's no way I'm repenting from it. However, if the rapture actually happens, Cole has given me full permission to grab onto his leg. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm pretty damn sure God has one of those pulley systems from the ancient Egypts. Right. And he's going to pull me up that way. Because okay. <laughs> that's a lot of weight to pull up. So uh, she's not going to add anymore, yeah, really. I'm just going to be holding on going, help me. <laughs> Take me to. Right. Okay. So where do we draw the line? Um, not on the wall. I'll smack your ass. Okay. God damn it. Oh, wow. I can't draw on the wall. All right, draw on the wall. I want to see this. So, do you think all gods throughout ancient, the ancient worlds were gods? I think they were the belief system that the ancient people had. So, who was it they saw come down from the sky? I believe for every single human being on this entire earth, that is based on their own belief system. So, how do you explain them? I mean, even in the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, the Mahabharata, the uh, India Vedis, the uh, all the all of them describe very similar. No, they don't. No, they're not similar experiences. Their experience is based off of the culture, based off of the perspective, and based off of. Not one Bible story has anyone ever seen God. <clears throat> no, they're written by men. No. No, they Nobody's don't see God. God. We there is can't. God. We've seen the angels. We've seen the archangels. Right. We've seen uh, Metatron. We've we seen see the light bushes. of God. We've we cannot see God. You cannot it's not look possible. upon his face. You don't think the light's electronic or technological? Nope. No? Nope. Okay. I think it's the beginning. The beginning. The Lord says he is the beginning and the end. That fits with a scientific explanation. Okay. For the universe. Adam. Could any of us ever look upon the Big Bang? No, no it's too bright. We would die. 
Yeah. He is the beginning and the end. Okay. He is the big bang and the big crunch. Which is when two atoms smash together. Yes. Yeah. And which literally we can't look on it. That's true. Well, no, just a part of an atom, the rib. (laughs) That's a proton. That's a proton. No, it's a rib. No, it's a proton. No, it's a big rib. (laughs) Okay, whatever. She's loving it. (laughs) Oh. Wait, no, that's McDonald's. Yeah. Um. (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, like. That that's the problem I always have with them all being the same. Mm-hmm. We uh, number one, we can't listen to God. We can't hear, hear upon His voice, right? Which also makes sense because it's a big bang. Brand boom, ah, 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 your skin falls off and you're a skeleton. Brand, God, the old guys, you guys that. that was crazy. We we like we can't <clears throat> listen to him. We can't see him. Mm-hmm. We can listen to his followers and hear his followers. Okay, and actually, parts of him. Okay, and so the Metatron thing- is the voice of God. When you hear God's voice, you are listening to Metatron, an angel, not God himself. For an- and see, the thing, too, is that if you actually read all the religious texts, yes, there are some overlaps. Okay? So, yeah, um, like, let's say the, the flood theory. Okay? Right. <coughs> That's in pretty much every text has a every flood legend, has a flood... flood thing okay but at one point our entire freaking world was basically covered in ice of course it flooded mm-hmm. okay and it would have taken a while for it to recede if it did it didn't recede in some places all this ice and no blender yeah. <laughs> they i bet they did some great ice but some t-rex ices and some uh uh yeah ew but no one made a margarita because they didn't have a blender. <laughs> or an apple teeny because that was a sin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brent. okay, but seriously, there are overlapping stories, yes, but there's overlapping stories in all cultures. Mm-hmm. There's overlapping stories now. Yeah. Plus, people. that also brings up the whole idea of what came first, the chicken or the egg. Right. Okay? So, we have an old saying in the Western world. I saw God that day. Mm-hmm. You could be talking about the first time you had sex, the first time you drank a beer, <laughs> the first time you drove a truck. Mm-hmm. Friend, I saw God that day. Friend, the first time you, you, you laid eyes upon your own child. Yep. Friend, like it can be anything. Speaking of child. But what came first? You know what Anthony wants to be? The, well, hold on. The stories <laughs> of God. Okay. Uh-huh. And seeing him, or the saying. Because if you think it's the saying, Mm -hmm. what if they just embellished on that saying? Like you would a story. Right. Well, and and even even their words and the way they spoke, even in Old English and in, you know, the translations is all different. Yeah. So it's all about translation. Well, like, okay, so when you look at ancient cultures... yeah. Before we continue on, what well, Anthony, Anthony wants to be an alchemist. How the fuck do you dress as an alchemist? Huh? In a robe with a scepter. No, he wants to be an alchemist. <laughs> I'm not going to... Like as a profession? Yeah. He wants to make I thought you meant for Halloween. No. So he um, wants to be a chemist. Yeah. But he calls it an alchemist, which I thought was as cool as shit, like... Right on! Hell yeah! I've got old alchemy fucking uh, drills and all kind of shit I can give you. Yeah. Cool. Make some potions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that without being not a good influence. <laughs> oh. So, yes, alchemy. Which, yes, today's scientists. Are technically old alchemists in not all new science. Chemists. Not all. Chemists are. Chemists yeah. are. Um, biologists, biologists are. So biologists are. Maybe you can answer this for me. There was a genetic uh, scientist back in, I believe, the 1920s, and I don't think it's Francis Crick, that actually found an alien gene 
within our DNA, an alien strand within our DNA. And when he brought it up, he was shunned by the entire scientific Because how can you call it alien? I don't know. How is that, like... I that, think it was Francis Crick, though. Like, that's what I don't get, is did he have an alien with him to actually cross-reference? No, probably absolutely not. Because that was before 1947 when we actually had alien bodies. You know, but, like, well. it doesn't make sense. How can you call it that if you don't have the cross-referencing material? I don't know. It's why the FBI does not list Bigfoot. the Bigfoot hair that they have on file right. that we all believe is Bigfoot hair. They just say unknown species. Unknown mm-hmm. species of primal descent. Yeah. Friend, okay. And I thought that was the stupidest episode was when they talked about aliens of Bigfoot. That... Which one? There's like eight of those. Uh, well, no, there's a movie out. I've got the movie. The, there's a, the Alien Bigfoot Connection is actually a movie now too it came out a year or two ago yeah um, and it's interesting I mean there's some interesting concepts there but honestly I still stick and I always will that Bigfoot is a guardian he's a guardian of the woods of the mountains whether it's Yeti of the Himalayas or uh, the so you're going more ancient race versus alien race yeah mm-hmm. absolutely because uh, then you got the other ones that are uh, Bigfoot's an alien. No, he's not. I'm sure he's got some interdimensional qualities to him, potentially. But, no. All right, what do you think of the Star Child skull? <sighs> <laughs> the crystal skull, or are you talking about No, I'm different? talking about the actual Star Child skull. I don't know. I heard a lot of, uh... So, you had the whole... And I haven't seen that episode yet, but I know, oh, okay. I know, I know, I know what you're talking about. The Star Child... I heard too much that that was all hoaxed and, and faked anyway. Um, now, was it? I don't know. Uh, there, there's too many, you know, too much speculation and too much. Uh, yeah, you, all you it can wasn't do just is, a deformity. All you can talk about is opinion. For because an, nobody knows the damn truth about it. Like if ancient aliens ever found out about head smashed in Buffalo Jump, <laughs> for an, they'd be like, how did he survive so long with a broken skull like that? <laughs> He didn't. He died within a second, dumbass. <laughs> like now, there was a uh, uh, a cattle mutilation, I think, recently in a couple last couple of years <coughs> in, in Oregon, where the cow actually lived with, and they didn't get everything. I don't think that they normally get. They took her ear. Uh, mm-hmm. They took half her jaw. Okay. And uh, but she lived. And but you see people with head trauma all the time that live through that shit. And right. then they have deformed skulls because of it. Or you see people that have been shot in the brain that somehow freaking live through mm-hmm. it. And now there's a hole in the skull and the skull melts differently and it connects differently. And The rapper 50 Cent. Right. Shot nine times, still has a piece of bullet in his tongue. Because he was shot twice in the face. And he's made more than most people after he got shot. Or have a raw, raw Rasputin. He has a guardian alien watching over him. Friend. Oh, I mean guardian angel. (laughs) Yeah, like, it... People can live through a hell of a lot more than we give them credit for being able to live through. And so can cows. Huh? And so can cows. All creatures can. Like, there are people, and there are animals, and there are things that happen... (laughs) That there's no way in hell a person should live through that. Right. But they do. There's Speaking also of that. genetic deformities and different things like that that cause some horrible effects. Do you guys remember the cartoon movie Zootopia? Oh, I love that movie. I like yeah. cartoons. Where they're all like uh, walking around as animals, mm-hmm. doing people things. Mm-hmm. Do you realize there's a scene in there where one of them's eating ice cream? Yeah. Who milked it? <laughs> <laughs> the, the brown cow. <laughs> the brown cow milked herself. That's people milk. That's an people milk. Okay. That's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> 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 Eric, quit milking yourself. <laughs> oh. Men have no reason for today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. And that is a possibility. That that's deformity. Mm-hmm. Titty deformity? 
yes, we actually could have had a reason for it. And due to the fact that the two subspecies of like male and female split up jobs, it was decided it wasn't needed by our bodies. Right. <clears throat> so we still have the parts, but they there's no don't need for produce. them. Yeah. Mm hmm. Like, I'm pretty sure no college would ever do it, but I'd be interested to see uh, literally a milking um, wow. test. <laughs> what? Come here, lady, let me milk you. No, they, okay, so they did that test already, <laughs> yeah. where they took a non-pregnant woman um, who was past period, and they literally milked her, and she did produce milk. Huh. Okay. After like a month. Right. I wonder if a guy would. We don't, I don't know. We don't no. have the proper memory. Lens. But I wonder if they I would just memory. slightly develop to actually do it. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to step out of that. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have fun getting milked, okay? <laughs> we will cast somebody else for that project. Yeah, there oh. could be a few guys that might enjoy it. Yep, yep. Friend, you never know. Uh, yeah. Why do you think they call it? I'm not going to slut shame here, so. <laughs> so, let, let's wrap up. Let's wrap uh, up the milking experience. No, no, no. Let, let's wrap up uh, the alien god discussion. So, me personally, Morgan being my deity, Morgan's Morgan. She is a goddess. She is not an alien. Um, Thor, Zeus, yes, they they exhibited extreme skills and magic. I think magic is magic. It's all energy. Um, regardless how you look at it, it's all energy. Prayer is energy. Um, so yeah, I, I have a hard, hard, hard time accepting that all of our deities across the world and through ancient times not just alien. deities they, they claim that uh, like everything yeah I know I know it's a test to aliens Joy of Arc okay so here's my problem with the ancient astronaut theory mm -hmm. okay is it leaves no room for actual human ingenuity, ingenuity. okay so it says that everybody <laughs> from fucking Isaac Newton and Da Vinci down are yeah Einstein Tesla it, yes all, all, all of them. these people couldn't possibly be that smart so it has to be aliens that gave them the information yeah okay we don't know what the human brain is actually capable no, cause, cause of doing half the human brain we don't even know what purpose is so you cannot tell me. That a person cannot tap into specific sectors of their brain that maybe somebody else cannot and comes up with these ridiculous ideas or knows how to play hmm. instruments or does... There's all kinds of different things that the human brain is capable of doing. Right. Okay? And we cannot say that every single thing that we have ever created, ever done, or ever will do is from something else besides ourselves. Yeah. Well, we have know. to give ourselves the credit of the fact that it is possible for us to create our own culture, our own thoughts and our own reasoning. That's the whole point in the free will in the first place. So, and going on that thought, we know and I can't remember his name of uh, the Nazi rocket scientist that Developed NASA basically. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Do you remember? Uh, it starts with a B, and I'm drawing a blank right now. Von. Von Brat. Von, Von Brown. Brown. Yeah. Von. So. Braun. He was already in development of rocket, the V2 and the rocket program in Germany during World War II. Um, Walter Von Braun. Yeah. Yes. Uh, did he get his? information and technology from aliens. I don't think so because they're all pointing to one UFO crash in the Black Forest in the 1930s. Okay. I don't buy it. 
yeah, but we're sitting here pointing at one mm-hmm. UFO crash in the Nevada desert as being the reason that we have half of the shit we do. But how many? No, there's been a lot more than the, the Roswell crash. There's been uh, the Kecksburg, which looks very much like the Glock, the bell. Um, you, you had the yeah the crash in Kingman, Arizona. You had, uh, uh, I mean, the, I think we did a whole show just on uh, UFO crashes here a few years ago, didn't we? Yeah. So, you know, they and yeah, you're right. They do point everything at, at Roswell. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I I look at it this way: since the dawn of time, since the beginning of thought process in mankind, mm-hmm. we have looked at animals like birds. And we have always had that thought of, wouldn't it be cool to fly? Okay. Right. We have always seen different things in nature and thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be cool if we could do that? Well, they de- you know, they developed the helicopter off the hummingbird. No, but, I just do it. No, but see, <laughs> that's the thing, is that the second that you look at something and you go, I wonder how that works, mm-hmm. and you actually break it down and you go okay so it's the velocity of this it's this you can look it's at this, everything in this. nature <laughs> and base it on something that we've created then you can create something based off of that yeah does that come from aliens no it comes from our own ability our own ingenuity and our own ingenuity yeah. to look at something and say you know what one day humans will do this now i want to clarify do I think aliens don't exist? <laughs> Absolutely not. I, I think there's hundreds, if not thousands, of races out there. Do I think some of them, and I know I, uh, Cole and I are going to disagree on this, but do I think some of them are walking around here? Yes, I do. Do I think some of them are abducting humans? Yes, I do. Um, but do I think they've created everything we've got? No, I don't. Okay. I do not believe that they are as interested in us as everyone seems to believe no we're boring because how many like the the only thing i would ask every listener here is how many of you have an anthill or an ant farm i don't a few like yeah but how many of them actually have it for more than five years yeah you don't associate with a lesser creature and that's what we are that is not true yes it is no, it is not. Because, okay, so looking at the anthill, sure, there's a few people that are really into anthills, and they have anthills all over the place, okay? Or they have little colonies in a jar, something like that, right? right? If they however, have kids. <laughs> however, how many people have fish tanks? That's a lesser creature. No, it's not. You put it in your house, it sits there, you feed it, you do everything with it. How many people have fish tanks? Yeah. How many people sit there, like, have you moved to the ocean and, like, stay in the ocean for permanent time to live with them? Eh, there's probably a few. <laughs> no, they it died. Last very long. <laughs> they died. For an <laughs> How many people have cats? How many people have dogs? How many people Again, have all of these things? They're bringing them into their own home. Yep. Those are the people that went missing. Mm-hmm. They get taken. They are pets. <laughs> for an the guy with the anthill, there's a reason he has an ant farm. Because he doesn't leave his own freaking house. Someone came and got him a human, brought it back to his house, and he put it in a little jar. Friend, Don't you think some humans aren't alien <coughs> pets, too? Are what? I think so. Yeah. Wait, what did you say? We are pets to them. Yep. To some of them. There's no way we're not. Ah, there's got to be some races somewhere that you have a pet human. There have been too many sightings of UFOs for them to not have been here. I do agree aliens right. have been here. I do believe there are thousands of races of aliens out there. There has to be. We're still here because we still have UFO sightings that are legitimate. The Earth is not a perfect planet. I think it's a zoo. And the fact that there was already the genetic material for us to exist out in the universe, Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it all came to this one planet and that's it. There's no more anywhere else. Well, not to mention, they've already proven that alien amoebas... I say that loosely, but not earthly amoebas that come from outer space have come here on comets and asteroids. There is a moon of Saturn, I believe, and Kayla will correct me if I'm wrong, that is full-out diamond. It rains diamonds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Saturn, right? Yeah. Okay. 
I want to go Friend, get a diamond. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist anywhere else. That doesn't mean anything like that. Right. Friend, Mercury is found on almost every planet. Friggin', there is one of them, and I can't, uh, one of the moons, the entire core is Mercury. You felt Phobos, is it? No. Iona? Iona? Yeah. So, uh, I'm working on getting one of the 27 us- it it's Jupiter. Uranus. No, it's no, Jupiter. There's one in. There but there's two. Jupiter that has one that is full out Mercury. It's a Mercury core. Okay. You already have one telescope in the house. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, but I broke the tripod. We have to. Yeah. Okay. And it's we have to do better. <laughs> We're, yeah. If you're listening, you want to hook this up. Get us a, a really good quality telescope. So I'm not worried can... about it. So. <laughs> I am. <laughs> but uh... I'm, I'm watching but on the auction. Actually, friend. Okay, well, why do you want a telescope? Watch the planet, so I can actually find. Preferably mm-hmm. on the other side of the fucking moon. Yeah. What? To end that argument. We're gonna we're gonna shoot it down. You, mirror. You're gonna look at the other side of the moon that you can't see from Earth. No, we're gonna a shoot telescope. a mirror up there so we can actually. Well, mirror. yeah, but I want a camera attached oh, to the back end. Freaking yeah. god! No, okay. we're gonna shoot them. That's, that's not the way that works. If you could also like get Wi-Fi up there for me, we're gonna oh we're gonna have a camera. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's slingshot a mirror on the back side of the moon so we can actually look at it through the telescope and actually see oh, it. Back sh- I saw that in Superman. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Then the mirror shit. cracked. It can be done. Holy <laughs> shit. What? <laughs> <laughs> Kayla's um, out. We talked about mirrors. <laughs> no, no, no cosmic mirror. I, I'm, not, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. Maybe we're in a mirror box, and that's why we so, see so many stars. Let's talk. We have about eight minutes before we have to go to the top of the hour break. So all the evidence that we do have that they have been here on this planet. Mm-hmm. We have cave paintings. <laughs> okay. Right? With what? Cave paintings that go back thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. Okay. From either First Nations, Native American, the Hopi, uh, all the way to France. Uh, I mean... Okay, I I, I have to say it. I absolutely have to say this. Okay. Look at people's art today. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So, 10,000 years from now, they find a picture that I drew. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Is it 100% accurate to a human being? Okay, what about the sculptures? They actually have... It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Art is a concept and a thought process. So, so, so why would an ancient race put a helmet? Why would my daughter draw a tulip that only has one leaf? That's not even the same thing. That is absolutely the same thing. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. No. Because do okay. you know what? Can I ask you a question? Huh. What tells you it's a helmet? Because we based our helmets off of that, right? Um, potentially, yeah. Because you know, <laughs> Okay. Now, if I take a buffalo skull, mm-hmm. empty it out, and put it on my head, what is it? No, this is an actual bubble. Yeah, no. But, but okay, answer ahead. the question. It's, it's a skull a hat. Mask. So... We didn't have any... No, because I'm putting it on top of my head. <laughs> okay, well, Native Americans do that today. Yeah, it's a helmet. Okay, mm-hmm. now I got a question. What? For an, I'm going to ask this to you, Eric, mm-hmm. and all those ancient a- theorist fucks. For an, <laughs> did I'm we not have sure. anything circular in freaking ancient times? Oh, they had discs. They had plates. They had everything. Like, okay. do you think this is the first time in history anyone ever put a watermelon on their goddamn head? <laughs> All right. Not only that, but think about it this way. Mm-hmm. So that one's for Dave. People still, <laughs> have, people still have thought processes like that, where they yeah. see something in nature. They see a bubble. A bubble flying, okay? Right. Little kids are playing with bubbles. Different things like that, right? Mm-hmm. And you go, huh, I wonder what it would be like to live in a bubble. I'm going to draw a picture of me... In a bubble. In a bubble? Hey. Okay, it doesn't really? matter. <laughs> art, that's the thing about art, is who's to say that that was realism? It's not realism. Not all of it. Mm-hmm. Some of it is creativity. That's art. Art is always something that you will not necessarily find in nature unless it is seriously a realistic picture. Right. And not just that, but like, okay, like you look at the cave drawings of mm-hmm. my ancestors, okay? Right. Friend, 
they're pretty fucking bad. <laughs> but the problem is, if one of my ancestors said to someone in the 1950s, mm-hmm. my great grandmother drew that. But he didn't finish with as a two year old. <laughs> they just assumed she did it as an adult. Like, so, but, come on. <laughs> but let me clarify. So the same tribes that are doing these cave paintings, using the Native Americans for the example, because the the uh, cultures in France and all that were different. Um, they all believe in star people. Uh, look at the Dogon tribe in Africa. They believe in. I believe it's serious. Yes, they uh, do. But that's because okay. So if you actually think about back in the day, okay, who, who believes in the ant people? All you had to do try to believe in ant people was ponder. I don't know every fucking no, tribe. No God damn <laughs> racist motherfucker. <laughs> no, so all you had to do was ponder. You didn't have video games. You didn't have this. You right. didn't have that. Your freaking entertainment was sitting around a fire and telling stories. I'm watching stars move. Watching stars move. Watching things from outer space because that's, huh. that was things your from big... outer space what did they see from outer space kayla uh stars comets mm-hmm. yeah that kind of stuff swamp gas oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no but i got a question for you there okay yeah. when did the first white person come to america not america north america oh i already fucking know really no it, it wasn't columbus no because the Spaniards were here before Columbus. The there. Vikings were here before the anyone. Were here before anyone, yeah. Fran. Okay. Uh-huh. What did the Vikings do? They took over any... They raided country. everybody. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. You don't think one of them knew of Da Vinci? Da Vinci. That was Leonardo Da Vinci. Right. Okay. That was before Da Vinci. No, huh? was it? No. Not much. What year? What, For, what right about the same time? Huh? Da Vinci was fourteen hundreds, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So what? When did the Vikings? Raid? They stopped coming here about sixteen hundred when we started coming here. Okay. For well, when like white man. <laughs> For mm-hmm. um. Fucking white man. Oh my god. What? Go ahead. So if the Vikings were here and they told a story. Of well, a man who could they, fly. They told great stories. Yeah, a man who could fly. <laughs> right. A man who could make things explode just with a piece of paper. And they showed him paper. Because mm-hmm. Vikings had paper. They had papyrus at that time. Right. Papyrus. Because they, papyrus. Because they got it from... Because after Rome fell, mm-hmm. right... They took over Britain. Okay. They were the next people to invade Britain. Right. Um, so they they would have had leftover papyrus because they used a lot of the Roman built buildings in England for their own um, huts. Mm-hmm. A lot of them just moved in. Because it was a good area to store your treasure that you got from the Anglicans. Friend. Anglo-Saxons. Yeah, Anglo-Saxons. Yeah. Friend. Um, it's a possibility that a lot of them told the story. And you got to think, like, yeah, like, we, as new as America is, mm-hmm. friend, so are the native traditions. Yeah, but think about, like, our own American traditions, okay? And our own American, what you would call wise tales, or what you would call, uh... Folklore. Folklore. Yeah. You talk about a guy with wooden teeth that chopped down a cherry yeah. tree and spit across the <laughs> river. Like... And none of it's true, but... None Paul, of it's true, but... Paul Bunyan. There are plenty of people that still believe that, yeah, he had wooden teeth, and he spit across the river, and he could chop down cherry trees, and he could do... What you did. Well, you didn't have wooden teeth. No. They were like hippopotamus uh, and they were elephant okay. and yeah. um, all but, kinds of shit. But, I mean, thinking about it like that, we do that still. Mm-hmm. We still talk about people that we hold in a higher class. Bloody Mary. Okay. And years from now, years from now, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, they'll look back on our culture and they'll say, 
Oh man, this super smart guy. Let's let's just take for right now's sake this Elon Musk guy. Hmm. He was able to do this, 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 and this. Oh my God, it must have been aliens. You know what? We'll be on Mars by then. Okay. Well, he will be. I'm not going to Mars. No, you can stay here. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm not I mean, doing the whole Quaid thing. Okay. For <laughs> analysis, we sit we'll, there we'll and we we, else we pick apart cultures and we pick apart their thoughts and their beliefs and their systems and we make it fit to our own thought processes of today mm-hmm. well in doing that we completely stomped on their culture and their thought processes back in that day everybody had different ways of thinking and that's why i'm saying when you look at the cave paintings you look at hieroglyphics you look at different things like this you got to think of it more as what would somebody think about a picasso 400 years from now. Well, with that thought, we're going to go to our first break. Well, our only break. So here we go. <laughs> we'll be right back. And we'll be right back after this break. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, thank you for listening to S4 Radio. So I am here today with three lovely ladies from Red Rover Tax Service out of Cedar Woolley, Washington. Ladies, how are we doing today? Excellent. Wonderful. Perfect. So... What do you guys offer for services? So we do income tax returns, but this time of year, we're also getting a lot of people that have letters from the IRS. So if you call us or come into the office, we're able to help you go over that letter, understand it, and respond to it as you need to. Uh, We do amendments. We are helping people with their late filings if they haven't filed yet. Um, That kind of thing. Perfect. So, and where can we get a hold of you guys? Uh, we are located in Cedar Woolley off of Metcalf Street at 817 Metcalf Street. Uh, you can always find us on Facebook at Red Rover Tax Service. Uh, you can find us online on our website at www.redrovertaxservice.com or you can always give us a call at 360-660-1160. Perfect. And with the new, uh, like, with your website, are they able to access you even from out of state or out of area? Absolutely. Uh, We have clients from all over the country, so you're able to send your information through the portal, and we can actually file your return. You can sign. You can do all of that through the portal. Excellent. So, with that, thank you very much, ladies, for coming on today and joining us, and for all you out there, if you need your taxes done, if you have any questions about taxes... Make sure you visit www.redrovertaxservice.com or contact Red Rover Taxes at 360-660-1160. And we'll be right back. And welcome back. So if any of you are local to the area, uh, Skagit County, um, just so you know, the ladies of Red Rover Taxes will be hanging out in Cedar Woolley all weekend on June 3rd, 4th, and 5th for the blast of the blast to the past event. You're not gonna be there too, you know? Yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to be <laughs> hanging out, playing games, doing everything. It's going to be a good weekend. So if you're in local to Skagit County, come out and join us. Cascade days too in August. Yeah. Right here in Concord. Yeah. Friend. So anyway, so, so getting back to evidence. Oh jeez. <laughs> Your so-called evidence, sir. No. Actually, I'm going to piss just, you off for a second. So I, I'm just, I'm I'm gonna, just presenting nope. this from, from the show. I'm going to piss you off for a second. What's that? So you'll never guess what I saw on one of my Facebook groups this morning. And not like a paranormal group, uh-huh. a local community group. Oh, good God, what? Someone asking for help. They have an issue with their home where their closet doors keep banging. Huh. And not like banging shut they're closed and they're getting banged on why is that gonna piss me off because there are over 600 comments on them you know what over 580 of them are what sage the house huh sage the house oh good (laughs) fuck whatever check for opossums (laughs) well first of all is uh you gotta look at the mundane you know, we had a 3.0, uh, 3.2 earthquake coming out of Oso. Actually, we had a 3.6. They had 3.6? got upgraded. Huh? It really? got upgraded. Mm-hmm. Friend. Yeah, I felt it. So, I mean, you know, I, I didn't. I didn't. This house teeter-tottered. Did it? 
Yes. Yeah, oh, we have damn. a shitty foundation. For, um, <laughs> but, you know, for some... And our room isn't actually connected to the house in any significant <laughs> way. So it teeter-tottered the other way. Uh, yeah. For an I watched the door kind of move. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and that's what I asked somebody who was talking about doors banging. Is, uh, did it happen one time or has it been happening for a couple months since you moved there or what? For, and since they moved there, they've been there for three years. So and now they're been just, going they, on they, the they're just bringing it up now. Their toddler is just old enough to start freaking out. Oh. Uh, I gotcha. They just ignored it. Well, yeah. But now their toddler is scared to sleep in any of the rooms. Anyone offered to go investigate it? Uh, they, a bunch of people gave num- numbers and stuff and uh, different, but I don't know because it's all private message because. Oh, okay. So, okay. but. Um. A whole bunch of people suggested priests. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I would agree with the mundane if it wasn't every door. And it not like every door at the same time. Yeah. Oh, it's not just the closet door? Just, no, like every closet door in the house. Pantries, everything. Oh, but all okay. at different times. Huh. That's not mundane. No. That, that's I can't that, see that. There's something going on. Friend. If you want, reach out to them. Do they have animals? Huh? No. Okay. No, I, I honestly, that's that's always my first actual like thing. Like half of the argument became that like why didn't the rental company or the uh, real estate company disclose that? And about five realtors came on and said we only have to disclose like. They normal have to, stuff. They have to close <laughs> the death. That's it. They don't just well, and no, they don't. Not, not in Washington that. State. No? No. No, okay. it's not required. Okay. Um, apparently, the the past owner did die in the house. Okay. Friend, so, but... They're pissed off because someone's in their house. Who knows? It could be so many things. Friend. Mm-hmm. So many things. So, so but yeah. Want, if you want, reach out to them. It's up to you. I don't carry one way or the other. The post was already two weeks old, and it was uh, no, no, okay. people had already like. I, I think they are going to find the help they need, and it's in Snohomish, so no. that's pretty far for us. Yeah. All right. So, All what right. about your evidence? Yeah, so, evidence. So, uh-huh. folks, I'm, g- I'm going to clarify something here. I am not an, an ancient astronaut theorist. Oh, she totally is. He's lying, <laughs> friend. I, I do have Zechariah Sitchin's books. I have all the, the, the but. And Chariots of the Golds, and, and they sorry. are all based on uh, ancient Sumerian text. I mean, he, but <coughs> whatever. He so, goes out every weekend and checks on the pyramids with his uh, best friend uh-huh. from some ghost show that no one oh, Zach watches. Megan? Yeah, yeah Zach and I <laughs> go over the uh, I, think the, I think the pyramid was a machine. I really do. Every once in a while, they pick up the crazy hair dude, George Strop, whatever his name is. <laughs> Your your that's my boy. <laughs> Not really. Um, and then they go to all these different realities. Hey, you know, I, I'm going to say, I, I wonder if he's an atheist. I really do. No, he's an ancient astronaut theorist. Is that a religion? It's his religion. At this point, yes, it could be considered one. Okay. So they worship aliens. No. Essentially. Yeah. Not exactly. Yeah, they do. If your whole focus, the following would, huh? The following of ancient aliens would, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, what's your evidence? He's a sir? pastor. He'd be considered a pastor of that religion. Cult, maybe. No, he'd be. Well, yeah, same thing. A <laughs> of that religion. Uh, so, okay, the, the next evidence is the Nazca. You know, pic, pic, oh, God. The what do they call P- pictographs? Nazca lines, Nazca lines. Nazca lines, you got the pyramids, you got Easter Island statues, you got all okay. these different... All I had growing up was a spirograph. I like spirograph. That's actually. all I got. Like, yeah. So, you, you guys in the States got way better toys, I guess. We do. <laughs> well, we did. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. You keep your lead paint train. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> uh, my argument with the Nazca lines is they, they say it can only be seen from above. Well, yeah. you go on top of the mountain. Hey, go! Stamp right there! Go to the right! I, I'm pretty sure you couldn't hear him from the top of the mountain. Oh, yeah. 
they had they had long string with cans. Well, but I got a question for you then. Are any of them in Washington? No. Well, the Georgia Guidestones, but that's a whole different. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Actually, we Nazca should. lines wouldn't last in Washington because it rains too goddamn much. Right. Well, exactly. Name one fucking mountain you can actually see from the top of on any given day. This is desert. This is no, no, no. In Washington. No, I know. Okay, you couldn't do it in Washington. I've never seen a mountain in the desert. Okay, well, it's just rolling hills. Do we have no? Okay, look at Iraq. That was a mountain. Where? Mm. Those are mount- mountains separating Turkey from Iraq. Uh-huh. There are mountains. Uh-huh. Oh, I didn't know that. No, I like seriously. I always like. They never show a fucking mountain in any movie. They show Iraq in. You see a sand no. dune. I, we were like, yeah. We were literally. I loved what we. I love Telfar. Telfar. We didn't get attacked. I told you that the whole year yeah. from 05 to 06. At one point in time, the town of Telfar, Telfar, was a training ground for the insurgents. But they were cleared out. They had moved on by the time our unit got into the telephone. So, no, it was the most peaceful tour that I had in Iraq. Uh, as far as we didn't have any mortars, we didn't have... Now, our infantry units did get attacked if they went into town. Uh, they had rolling IEDs. There, there was shit that went off around the base, way out in the distance, you know, when they went on convoys and whatnot. But what was great... What was cool about that tour was we were literally, you could see the lights of Syria at night. The mountain range in front of us, uh, it's, it's actually the picture I have on my Facebook profile is telephone. So that mountain range you see in the background, it's huge. And that's what separates Iraq, Syria from Turkey. Turkey's on the other side <coughs> of the mountain. <clears throat> so it might be hard to see because it's kind of hazy. Are you saying that's a mountain? There is a mountain there. I might have better pictures of it. That's oh, a hill. Okay. Um, I see a hill. So, explain to me what you were you were trying to say about the the Nazca lines. Oh, I'm not done. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, God damn it, Kayla. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, <laughs> that area we were in is what they actually called ancient Samaria. Okay. Because of the fact that, you know, Samaria was in that region before it was borders of Syria, borders of, there weren't countries there. It was, but that was, and you could feel the, the energy there was fucking awesome. It really was. It was real mystical. Um, and there were some Navy EOD guys that actually went into the caves, the cave systems, um, because there was artifacts up there and there, there was uh, goddess imagery on the uh, on the walls and shit. So that was cool. Um, so when you look at that mountain, no, you're not going to, I get it, you're not going to be able to yell, but my point is you could still be able to see those pictographs on the ground from the top of the mountain. You wouldn't have to be in a spaceship. <coughs> Do you know what my point is? Huh. How often have farmers been making cuts and they've been cutting words into their fields that can be seen from plants? How long have they been doing that? I don't know. I've never heard of that one. You've never seen them write like Ford or Mm -mm. the John Deere symbol into a field of Mm -hmm. corn? Not here. Friend, happens quite often. Mm -hmm. Friend, you get a farmer that's really good at it. Right. They're not using Google Maps like Google Earth. Mm-hmm. They're just doing it. Wee-hee-hee-hee. Yeah. Right. Okay. Half of them can literally write in cursive into their field. <laughs> Why couldn't they draw a picture? See, I always looked at like, that. A... Makes that mundane. Like it really does that. Right. Just because it can't be seen from the ground, and actually, I don't believe that's true. If you go on to a twenty-foot ladder. Mm-hmm. You could probably see most of it. Did they have twenty foot ladders back then? Well, they've had ladders they had since the dawn. <laughs> eighty foot ladders. Huh? They had eighty foot ladders in some areas. Well, they had to when they built the pyramids. You, yeah, you look at even ancient China. <laughs> right. How tall is the freaking Great Wall? Dude, climbing devices have been around since people yeah. have been climbing. Mm-hmm. 
for an um plus like one of them is on a mountain it's on the side yeah. of a mountain yeah, yeah you can see that from the ground yeah for an all you need is higher ground and you can see it okay okay so, so in, in the pyramids we were talking about before the show so we'll talk about that could, could we not have moved rock Apparently not. We needed alien help. <laughs> no. Seriously, do you think humans could have built the pyramid? Absolutely. Okay. What do you think, Kayla? Yes. The. Uh, I think it was. A, what's the What's what, the Washington Monument? Monument. What is the actual fucking name for that? <clears throat> Mount Rushmore. No, Washington Monument. Uh, the big dick in. Oh, the obelisk. Is it an obelisk? Yeah. Okay. The one that is incomplete in Egypt is proof that we can do that kind of stuff. Yeah. For in the fact that they got it all three sides done. Mm-hmm. And when they went to do the bottom cut, it cracked. It cracked. And they were like, ah, shit. So they left <laughs> it. We're leaving this. Well, they left it. For in, but to think that they did that. And these things were 150 feet tall to 100 feet tall. Mm -hmm. And they cut it in one and then moved it. Friend. And we still have guys that in Egypt that do that. Yeah. Friend. That proves. And they're still using the same tools. It's not like they updated. They're not using saws. They didn't have saws. Well, they did, but. No, but the guys doing it today aren't using saws. Mm -hmm. They're using the old tools. Rocking pistols. The ones that their fathers used, the ones that their grandfathers used. Right. Like, it's still passed down. Passed down. If it's passed down like that, and they're still doing it with the original tools and still able to get it done, that proves there's no alien interaction with that. We're doing it. Mm-hmm. I would... Yeah? No, go ahead. No, what? So, what was the, the site that you were talking about before the show? What are they... And obviously they didn't use mortar, but... They used fine, really high heat to bring the rocks together. They were H's. Oh, Puka Puma. Yeah, there you go. So how do you think we did that? Alchemist. Uh, yes or no? I have a really weird thought process on no, that. No, okay? we'll, we'll spit like, it out. Okay, so I believe in... <clears throat> Basically, I call it the recycle earth theory. Okay. Okay. And, all right, so if you look at, like, the world today, we have people in countries like uh, the U.S., mm-hmm. okay, U.S., Canada, any any first world country. Mm-hmm. You look at the first world countries, right, and we have technology, we have all of this stuff, we have vehicles, we have airplanes, we have everything, right? Right. Okay, Wi-Fi. All that jazz. Okay? Now, look at some of the island cultures. Okay? Mm -hmm. That have not had any real human interaction with anybody outside of their own island culture. Okay? They are considered primitive by our standards. Right. Okay? So, why wouldn't there be different levels of humanity in every level of humanity? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay? So, let's say we, at one point, were the primitive culture, A, and there were higher cultures. There were people doing higher technologies, higher things. And this has been proven. Like, you look back in time and you see these people were still hunting and gathering Well, these people were traveling the world in ships. And you see that all the time, the difference in culture, the difference in technology, and everything else. So, I believe that we were already to this level of technology or higher at one point. Okay. Well, you look and, at look at the, what they call the Baghdad battery, for example. And the thing is, is that we're all on different evolutionary paths depending I think you're on looking what at culture that too we're broadly. put into. What? I don't think we all were. No, and that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It came out wrong. But I no, but I th- I think it's smaller than you're even thinking. <clears throat> I 
I think certain families had that ability, but it wasn't taught to other families. Yeah, okay, so there's differentiation in class, in culture, and in technology. Right. You see it today. You see it everywhere. Difference in class, technology, and culture. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, who's to say that one of these higher classes of people back in the day, okay, didn't end up going to war with, like, another higher class of people. Take or their technology. something of that nature, okay? And we wiped each other out. There was a big flood that came. It killed a bunch of people. Whatever it is, there was a cataclysm mm -hmm. that caused death to this culture. Just like the fall of Rome, the fall of Egypt, the fall of all of these countries that get to a certain and specific point in technology and advancement eventually fall. That's okay. the way that our world works. So if they were already up here and something happened, some cataclysm happened, mm -hmm. okay? So the only people that are left are what we would consider primitive culture. Okay? You have to build back up to that level. Right. Okay? But we're still there. We still have what we consider primitive culture. Mm -hmm. So if something happened to all of the first world nations... The primitive culture is going to go take their The technology. primitive culture is going to take another thousand years yep. to get to the level that we're at now. And they're going to think that they're discovering these things for the first time. And it's a big cycle. That's why I say it's a recycle earth theory. What cuts the cleanest in the world? Diamonds. No. I have no idea what. Laser? No. <laughs> what? Water. Water. Yeah. Okay. When was the first water pump developed? The first what? Water pump. Oh, I don't even know. 2000 BC, or 200 BC. Okay. Now that's the first one we know about. The right. first one that was advertised. Fran, when was the Copper Age? The end of my... Uh, um, fuck. What's the name of it? <laughs> um, water gun. <laughs> right. Pressure washer. Pressure. The end of my pressure washer. There you go. It's copper. Okay. But the water is pushed through a pipe. Right. And then the pipe is distended until it is such a small pinhole that it creates pressure. If, yeah, right, right, right. Why is it not possible that people back then developed a system like that not people someone and used it to cut those lines i know it's possible friend the first system was uh <laughs> um i'm gonna fuck up his name but it's greek inventor and mathematician cestibus invented the water organ Sestibus. an air pump with valves on the bottom a tank of water <laughs> in between them and a row of pipes on top okay friend Used right and pushed hard enough, could cut rock. that system could cut rock. Yep. No, absolutely. Okay. How long does it take for uh, concrete and metal and different things like that to, uh, I would say, almost disintegrate into nothing? How long does it take? Yeah, it depends on where it's at. And how I think much. it said two, three hundred years, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, it also depends on ero uh, no. erosion rates and everything yeah, else. environment. Or, right. uh, this is this climate. this was considered one of the worst in uh, environments that we would ever experience, mm -hmm. and it was two to three hundred years. Okay. Yeah. So, like the entire world is radiated. Right. Friend, there is absolutely no humans left on yeah. Earth. Okay, so, so nothing here is go. running. So let's okay. say some again cataclysm <coughs> happens, mm -hmm. and it wipes out all first world countries. Meteor. Okay. So, something. It Meteor. doesn't matter what it is, but something happens where Meteor's it wipes out. more common unless it okay. was a climate, a cli uh, climate change, climate something change. like that. Whatever it is that wipes out right. first world countries. Okay? So, within a thousand years, mm -hmm. would we have anything still standing besides our megalithic? Well, that's what kills me is, uh, is some of the megalithic structures that are still standing. Other than, so there were, what, three three cultures that actually still had radiation from a nuclear bomb, supposedly, allegedly. One is in, I think, Brazil or Peru. Peru. 
One's in Pakistan. Um, one's in uh, Scotland, Ireland. Yeah. And they actually, there were people that were dropped, and horses that were dropped dead on the street from a nuclear blast. From uh, the equivalent of a nuclear right, blast. Right, right, right. I mean, and then you look at T- Tuscanunga. I know I'm saying that wrong. The, T- the Tuscanunga blast, mm-hmm. which they say was a meteor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess that's that's my problem. Is okay. Was it really a nuclear blast, or was it a meteor? Right. But what I'm saying is that, like a thousand years from now, people will look back on what's left mm-hmm. of our culture, and they will make assumptions and hypotheses based on little tiny things that they find. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because that's all that's going to be left is little tiny things or things. That are made of specific types of stone, stuff like that. Oh. So no, they won't. They drink. What? Coca-Cola. They won't make hypotheses. They'll ask Face Goog Twitter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Face Twitter. Okay. But hey, they'll be like. They drink Coca. Coca Cola. <laughs> yeah. Coca-Cola. Okay. Exactly. So. Cola. Yeah. What is this material? Well, that's plastic. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. They'll look at it and they'll go. Wow, what an we'll advanced have society, what an advanced, or whatever. And we'll or, have the equivalent of Superloos going, oh, plastic, aliens made it. Hey, that's all I'm saying, is that who is to say that the aliens mm-hmm. that everybody talks about weren't just an advanced race of human beings? Yeah. Who's to also say we're ever going to end up at that point again? You don't know that for sure. At what point? At the point of absolutely nothing Collapse. and going back from... Yeah. Oh. Now, you, you can't say it's going to happen. You can't. I you, cannot say for 100% sure it is going to happen. I think... But if you look back throughout history, every culture that has made it to a specific point mm-hmm. has collapsed. And we're nearing that point. The United States is nearing that point, according to some theories. Some of these cultures were around for thousands of years, and then all of a sudden they disappeared off the face of the earth. Mm. I mean, there's ancestry leading back to different stuff. But I'm not their talking about disappearing. I'm talking actual about cultural technology, crop. their thought, their but collapse, even then, their like, cultural system, everything. Mm-hmm. There is always. Whether it be a 5% chance, 0%, like 0.1% chance, 10% chance, that... We um, don't. Not just that we don't. Mm -hmm. That we actually save ourselves from it. There is. There is always the possibility of a save from collapse. Yes. Brent. And we're working on that now. We're trying to become a multi-planetary species. We're trying to do all these things. But at the same point... These aliens that come to us. Okay? I can also view that as a collapse, though, too. Yeah. Because what if the aliens that are coming back are, are us. us? That's what I'm saying. They're the okay. Elon of the last generation. Right. Okay. Or and we are them. And they're just picking the ones that they want. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying, too. Or we're them. It doesn't matter which way this works. It's what if there was only originally one higher species? And that one higher species spread out to different planets, different planetary systems, different universes, whatever you want to call it, okay? Mm -hmm. And they evolved differently based off of natural selection in the planetary environment. Oh, we're fucked. Okay? Because honestly, you would evolve completely differently based off of the planetary environment. (laughs) Right. Okay? So the gravity on, on Mars, for instance... You'd be shorter because it would be pushing and... Com- or, I'm sorry, you would be taller because the gravity isn't as thick on Mars. Therefore, right. your bone structure would be different. Your weight structure would be different. Uh-huh. And eventually, over thousands and thousands of years, the pigment of your skin would be different. The amount of hair that you have based on the climate would be different everything you would, you about you you would eventually adapt to that environment yeah. and if you were to try to come back to earth nobody would even recognize you as a human being mm-hmm. 
Eric would recognize me. <laughs> yep. And, and we're talking so many generations that they don't even realize that they originally did come from this planet or that planet or whatever. Yeah, but honestly, would you come back to this planet? Eventually. I would fly by and go, <laughs> Lock your doors. <laughs> nope, I don't think so. They've devolved. I'm going back home. Now, see, that's yep. the other thing, too, is that... We talk about culture as an ever-evolving culture. Well, there's de-evolution as well. Uh-huh. Once you get to a point, certain <laughs> cultures, certain things, they de-evolve. Yep. Based on situational awareness and everything else. They can de-evolve and become more savage or feral or whatever you want to call it. Eh? I would say so evolved. if we all came from the original, let's say, Big Bang, okay, mm -hmm. and it created life here and here and here and here, and all of us evolved differently based off of the fact that we were on this planet, that planet, that planet, mm. that, okay, originally, we were all the same freaking life form. We just evolved differently based off of... Where we landed. Where you landed. Where you landed and the resources that were at that location when you landed. Yeah. Yes. So your body composition could be entirely different. Mm -hmm. You could run off of mercury instead of water. You could see an ultraviolet instead of our light spectrum. Right. Whatever it is, based on the climate, the atmosphere, the electromagnetic field, everything else would change the evolutionary path of that original. Mm -hmm. So, are there aliens? <coughs> yes, I totally believe that there are different species that grew on different planets. Mm -hmm. Do I believe and that maybe some we from aren't different dimensions? all necessarily ancestors at one point back in the original beginning of time we all came from the same place at some point yeah um crop circles mm -hmm. so something popped into my head yeah, when they're talking ley lines and energy lines and, and they showed, I know you saw this one, where they showed the pyramids all lined up, uh, the, the, the sites the megalithic structure, and, the different, yes. Yeah. yeah. So we stopped building, unless you want to, unless you want to count, okay, I don't count skyscrapers and the shit we build today, um, as megalithic structures. I would. Yeah, they are megalithic the structures. Well, they are, but you won't see the lady, I don't know if you do or not, but, but Bear with me here. So okay. what if, since we don't build that style of ancient megalithic structure, what mm -hmm. if the crop circles took their place? Mm. Just a theory. I mean, anything's possible, I guess. If they were using those megalithic structures, like this theory says, as markers and they were they ran out of those markers because we ain't building them no not more. a chance no markers have to be able to be changeable that's why they make cro a crop circle yes but that what we're saying is that the, the original ones are still standing there couldn't possibly be a marker right. because of the fact that our poles change this yeah. has been proven our poles oh, yeah. no, absolutely. completely changed. Because they even showed in one structure where at one point it was in perfect alignment with the, the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. But but now, it changed. because of the pole yeah. change and switch, they, it, it, it isn't. But they, they measured the time in the, the yes. space uh -huh. from back when it was built, and it did line up with the winter solstice. But yeah, because of the pole shifting and, and uh, the changes in the earth, it doesn't anymore. Right. Um, Just like some of the stars that they must have <laughs> built these structures to no longer exist. Mm -hmm. They've either gone supernova or they've become a red giant right. and now they're a dimmer star, they're a brighter star, they're a freaking neutron star, they're collapsed into a black hole, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Okay? So, 
I don't believe that they could be markers because markers have to be able to move. I still think crop circles um, are markers for resources. What resources? So, say there's pot shops, corn. There, no, there's a gold mine. Corn, really? Hey, there's corn. a gold mine in this area. There's a mercury mine in this area. There's different resources that they might need from this plant. Uh, I think they're beyond using mines. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think they actually have to use a mine. I think they use atmosphere. No, I think it's beyond like mining. I I think they shake the earth, the that part of the earth until they get what they need out of it. No, we see alien made though. earthquakes is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't so, believe that they need those resources. If you are a space-bearing race, mm -hmm. okay, all of the resources that you find on planet Earth, you could find in asteroids, meteors, different things like that. <laughs> Except one. Okay? What, humans? Water. That is not true. If you need this exact composition of water... Mm -hmm. Hydrocarbons. Friend, you can find water anywhere. That's true, but all of them have a, all, all of the planets that have water on them have a di that we found have something added to it. We have the best water in the universe. Oh, okay. That's true. Oh, my God. <laughs> but no, if they require the same water, water and water is not a sustainable resource, no, it, it is, is not. not. Nope, no, it isn't. So well, it's not going to be here if it's their planet is out of water. It is a possibility that they're using ours to come get some every once in a while. Yes, but then you wouldn't need a damn crop circle to tell you where it's at. Well, yeah, they do. Why? There's oceans everywhere. Because you can't disrupt it. salt water. You can't disrupt the natural effect of the water on this planet without destroying the ecosystem that feeds that water. And I will also disagree with you on, <coughs> on another point, and that I do still think they use geothermal energy for powering some of their craft. Which they need volcanoes. Okay, there's volcanoes in our own system that aren't mm -hmm. on our Earth that they That's could true, use much without ones. Okay. Um, taking our resources or whatever. See, that's that's the thing is when we look at what Earth. If, what if they're passing by and they run out of fuel for whatever reason? I don't we're an AMPM. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're, we're, we're a stopping point so they can refuel and then go on to... Uh, refuel and grab that guy for a snack. Yeah. 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 Okay. You never know. That's a possibility. That is. Depends on which Crop reason. circles are advertisements for cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're or, billboards to the aliens. Get or, your humans here. Or don't stop here. They're crazy. Yeah. Uh, I mean. I mean, honestly. Or they're I, advertisements for our solar system. Or yep. they're a jackass teenager alien that's like, <laughs> dude, I taped it. There's too many of them <laughs> okay. for that. Graffiti. But it's a possibility. Really? How much graffiti do you see? Not alien that graffiti. much anymore. Friend, there, it, it's a possibility that it is, he's right, it's a marking system, but not just for our planet. Okay, so it's like... We are the only ones that we've found so far in the Milky Way, right? Right. Friend. I still like the alien graffiti. Theory. A crop <laughs> is the perfect place to build one of those. Because it disappears. So if it's just momentary... Meaning, a few days, mm -hmm. or even a month, like a month, because we don't know what they're actually putting into that soil. Because sometimes it comes away radiated and shit like that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Nothing grows there for fucking months or years. Yeah, sometimes, friend. I think it depends so, on the craft that built it. I think it depends on whether it's real or not. Well, yeah, no, no, that, that's my point. If there's no cellular structure change in the stocks, if there's no radiation or soil damage it's i'm not saying that it was humans but it was humans it's, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah jim and don <laughs> over in the uk that Friend, were using board so but with that it's a possibility it is a marking system for like <clears throat> mercury mm -hmm. well if you need to get warm that that's where you should go for it or uh right mars if you, you need to cool down guess what go to mars Friend, there you go Okay, so you're... you're We're a okay. billboard. 
or a so billboard. So it is a system. So it's like, uh, like, hey, two hundred miles left to go before you hit this. Gas. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, we are the perfect planet for it. Last rest stop for forty-five million light years. We are the perfect planet for it. Mm -hmm. We have everything. How many meteors hit Earth? Tons. And do damage. Uh, one every couple hundred years or so. We are very well protected by the other planets in our system. Mm -hmm. We are very well protected by our own electromagnetic field. And come on, you're not going to tell me Jupiter doesn't protect us. <clears throat> oh, Jupiter protects us. Jupiter is like our big brother up in the sky going, No, yeah. you shall not pass. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. All the other planets are constantly getting freaking beaten to shit by meteors oh, and shit. look at our moon. Yeah. yeah. And yep. It's one meteor hole. It's yeah. It's like, an acne planet. Right. So if you put a freaking um, sign up there, what's going to happen to it in three weeks? It's gone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Friend. And the radiation that they could be using and putting into our their crop circles. It, it, it's still there even after Farmer well, Brown. No, but that same radiation could be in the asteroid that hits, and all of a sudden it just changed that sign. Well, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're pretty much saying it's advertise your business here. Yes. Huh? Business or, like, what our planets have. But Not like not just Earth, like but like... Like I said, I think even after Farmer John goes in and combines his cornfield, I still think... The radiation. The marker, the marker is still there, and they can still read that marker. Well, okay, so, uh, There's I, probably one of advertising that moon saying diamonds last forever. Right. <laughs> and to be perfectly honest, like we don't see in the same light spectrum as uh, we see in a very, very small percentage of the spectrum of actual. So uh, what invasion. I would like to see happen is have a drone go over. We don't have them here. We can't do it. Not that we see. But it's have a drone go over it with different thermal... For, uh... No, it's not, because there are um, crop circles in Alaska. Alaska's just as wet. Well, and we don't know if there's crop circles in the woods. There are snow circles, but... Snow circles. There's points in the mountains that we don't go to that... that... Yeah. So you don't know if there's a marker... <laughs> Up well, and it could be a tree circle. I'm like, who knows? Yeah. This forest could be... I uh, mean, you, you know, so we had a case whatever. that we did in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And like all cases we did in other states, I would do a Google map uh, overlay. And all the trees were dead in a circle. Yeah. Outside their house. So, I mean, that could be seen as a crop circle, but dead, you know, made with dead trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so maybe that's how they do it in the woods. Maybe. So moving along. Crop circles, yes, they are graffiti. Alien graffiti. Crips run this planet. Oh, Jesus the bloods Christ. run no. Mars. No, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cattle mutilations. Well, okay, I'll change that. Animal mutilations. Human mutilations are rare. I'd that, like to see him try and fucking well, mutilate a kangaroo. Go ahead. <laughs> that you, fucker fights you, back. You don't hear about him so much in Australia. Yeah, I know we That's a, because everything there is going to kill you. <laughs> no one is okay, a cow is super docile. Yeah. In comparison to well, the first a one, fucking Well, the first one hippo. was actually a horse, and that was back in the late 60s, yeah, early well, 70s. A horse is also remember. super docile well, are, in no, comparison to a lion. But, like, I mean, either, they've, they've found deer. They've found... <laughs> got her guys. The cow was the first one they picked up trying to make contact, and now it's just kind of awkward to stop. Like, <laughs> so Either that or maybe uh, it's because of the sacrificial rites of the freaking Egyptian people that they use cows. Mm, what is no in India is the the cow is sacred. Yes, the cow is sacred. The cat is sacred in Egypt. <clears throat> you don't touch a cat or you die. Um, mm. However, the Angus bull, right, would have been the cow's ancestor, and mm -hmm. they were supposedly sacrificed to the gods of the other world all the time. So if we look at it that way, so. What can cause uh, an animal mutilation? So we have predator. A shotgun. No, there'd be marks. There is marks. No, but these are pieces that are actually surgically removed. 
Not always. Yeah, on all the actual cattle mutilation cases uh, that you can tell the difference between a predator, a cult, a sacrifice, that kind of thing. Because they're actually surgically removed. The mammary glands are, uh, the tongue's removed. And that's why the Diet Law Pass case creeps me out so bad. Because there were two of them that actually, it was just like a cattle mutilation. They were, the tongue wasn't ripped out. It was cut. It was surgically removed. In two of the cases, which was weird to me, and the eye was cut. Okay, I have a problem with the term surgically removed. Okay. Friend, we do have animals out there with big enough teeth or with sharp enough teeth that they can actually cut something and it can be considered surgically removed. But with the, with the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? With the uh, documented cases. The blood was removed. They were insinuated. No blood on the ground. Mm -hmm. No tracks on the ground for anything to come up to it. And it was like it was dropped in the sky. Okay, to be perfectly honest, now this sounds really ridiculous. I I have a problem with the idea of no tracks on the ground. Okay. Because the cow's in a field, is it not? No, I'm talking snow. A a lot of these cases were in the snow. um, And there's nothing around it. Okay, people do realize it snows uh, like during and after the mutilation happens too, right? So in some of these cases, the farmer saw Bessie. The farmer went to his house. Bessie was dead and chopped up. Okay, so just saying... There's just a few of the cases. Just all. saying that like, okay, if we're, we're not excluding any possibility of anything, mm-hmm. right? Okay, you're talking about an animal that has been drained of all blood. Mm-hmm. And no specific pieces are taken from animal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Vampire uh, alien? What? No. If it's a, Not a chance. fucking vampire that's living off of cows instead of people because they're a vegan. In a two hour period? If you actually look at vampire lore, it would have taken them 35 seconds. So you're saying vampires did it? I'm saying that, that's <laughs> not saying just, it's vampires, but it's, but it's vampires. vampires. No, but I'm saying that's just as big of a possibility as aliens coming down here and beaming them up and destroying them and then putting them back. In Oregon? Why not? Why not? Uh, we we talk. It's about cloudy these. here ninety percent of the time. Friend, they don't have to worry about UV light as much. <laughs> okay. Most of these things fucking happen at night. About half. Okay. So all I'm saying is that if we're not excluding the possibility of aliens coming down and attacking them, and we're not excluding the possibility of anything, then so vampires would here, be just as logical as. So would werewolves. What if it's government? Why would the government give a fuck about a cow? Because and honestly, if they were going to experiment on cows, why wouldn't they take them and experiment on them? But the thing is, so. Here, here's, a, here's a possibility. Why would the government do it? Um, what if they don't want to... What we we know the government's known for cover-ups. Right? Okay. So they don't want to admit they've done any environmental damage to an area because of radiation or chemical or anything Otherwise, else. Otherwise, okay. So what if they want to do testing without letting the public know? Then they take it to Area 51 it, and do it inside. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a cow. So they would be able right. to take that. Spooking everybody by dropping it back. Yeah. Yeah, they would have taken it. That's leaving it evidence. Whenever lives. our government ever been known to actually drop evidence on purpose, they don't. <laughs> like uh, it, it, they the do, government makes absolutely negative. no sense for that. They okay. would, but it's false you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just picking. Uh, I'm like, just picking all the possibilities. Out. Um, I don't see predators doing it because how could they fucking drain all the blood? Okay, we sit here some. and we say that there are, are are there is the possibility of all of these different types of subhuman, sub creature, sub category. Okay? A rake. Do you think so a rake did it? Who's to say that it didn't? Who's to say that a freaking a guy out in the woods that's trying to live off grid didn't do it? Why would he like, drain the blood? Why not? Why not? How would he drain all that blood? The same way a butcher does. Butchers. We drain blood all the time from animals. Yeah, 
by hanging it from a tree and slitting its throat. Nope. No. I am R. How do we do it then? By vacuum. Vacuum vat. Okay. How long does it take? 20 minutes? 20 minutes, maybe. You find the fucking uh, <laughs> jungler vein of a cow, it takes 20 minutes. Okay. And they're dry. Like, literally, you could dry those veins to the point where they're almost clean. Yeah, it's almost jerky after you're done with it if you wanted to. Friend. So, why would he do it to a random cow, a prize bowl, whatever the case, without going and just... But that's my problem. Every time we say it's a fucking alien, no one asks that question. Why? Why in the fuck? Why didn't they, they take that? it? Why wouldn't they take it? See that? Uh, yeah. Why would they leave it? Yeah. For real, would go? Huh? That's. What the fuck? I, I think yeah. there's more. That's of a my possi- issue okay. with that. So yeah. I think there's more of a possibility of uh, Farmer Fred over here getting mad at Farmer Joe over here for fucking having his cows come and graze on his field when that's his field and this is his line. And he comes over and he fucks up a cow so that it makes Farmer Joe over here go, holy shit, Yelling there's here. something crazy happening. And it spooks the shit out of the rest of the cows so and they don't produce point. the same so, way. So here's another theory. What if Farmer Brown pays Farmer Joe to do it for publicity? Yeah, because Farmer Brown is losing the fucking farm. Yes. Huh? So all of a sudden... Well, there's cattle mutilations, and there's money coming in from all these investigators that want to see it, and there's... Okay, so honestly, I think that that is more of a freaking human possibility than anything else. Okay. Okay. No, we're not done with this topic. All right, what? Um, So, okay. (coughs) And I don't know how they did it, other than maybe they they tested the cells of it, of the tongue, or whatever the, the hell. But... The earlier cases were done, what they said was by laser surgery. Okay. We didn't have that kind of technology back then as far as we know. Yes, we did. Okay, if we didn't have that technology, we can't identify it. That, right there. Okay. Fuck them. <laughs> I can't say it was laser surgery if we didn't know what laser surgery was. And how was it dropped from the sky? Well, when the vampire picks Pulley it system. up... Pulley system. No. <laughs> In two hours. Pulley system. In two hours? 15 seconds Trabulat. to pull a cow up there and drop it. And what about the marks? What about the tracks? You got Farmer Joe. You're going to see footprints in the marks. Are you? Or can you cover them up if you're a human? Yeah. How many people cover up their own tracks and make Bigfoot tracks in the snow? Probably a lot. <laughs> BFR goes, BFRO does it all the time. Right? Like, come on. <laughs> People have been covering How, how hard is it to cover tracks in the snow? It's not. Well, you, you're still going to see a mark. No, you're, you're gonna not. See... You're going to carry snow with you. Okay. Oh, not okay. only that, And but... fill every footprint in and then melt. Not only that, but, okay, how long does it take for that much snow to accumulate? Okay, I've lived in Canada before. Mm-hmm. And one good wind gust and five seconds of snow, and you can't tell anybody walked on that street. Oh, holy shit. We have about five minutes left. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, abduction. <laughs> so we know some abductions actually do happen. Barney and Betty Hill, for example. And they've been documented since the 12th century. Not near as often, obviously, because, well, we have internet now. They didn't back then. I, I would say Travis Walton was. Huh? I would say Travis Walton was. Yeah, oh, I, absolutely. We we know there's been um, abduction cases. I don't think... At the same time, there are other plausible explanations for his story because of the timing. What year was it? Does anybody remember? 1975. Okay, what was popular in 1970s? Fucking drugs, bro. LSD. Uh-huh. LSD. You saw a light coming for but you. You got all this crazy remember, shit happening. Come on. When the logging crew was being investigated, because they thought the logging crew did it, and they had multiple polygraph tests, they had drug tests, they had, I mean, they, they passed everything. Um, they did, but did he? Why is it? He disappeared. Yeah. For the amount of time that it took for that drug to get out of your system. 
I'm just saying. Okay. And, and, I'm just saying. Like, I don't like know if, if you ever took a polygraph. Potential of mundane. But at the same time. Walton? Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the same they time. They him probably worse than the, uh, the crew. Yeah, but the problem I have with polygraphs is we don't allow them in court. No. Which, to me, tells me automatically our own government believes that they're flawed, even though they give them out. <laughs> well, they are flawed. When I was being investigated in the Army, I was told straight up by my lawyer not to, because I wouldn't pass a polygraph having PTSD. Okay, so, not only that, but here's the other thing so, with the polygraph test, even, is if you believe it, then it's true. Right. And you can make your mind believe anything mm. well, is true. Well, at the same time, if you just did LSD, you don't have to make your mind believe anything. Well, it's Fred, been, it, it does. It's been proven, too, that if you can control your emotions and your breathing, you could pass a polygraph with a lie. Yeah, That's there's been, been proven. thousands of people that have done it. Yeah. People are trained to do it. Mm-hmm. And my issue is, Especially as the years went on, yeah. the logging camps, their stories fell apart. Well, they fell apart, and what, you know, uh, so you have to look his. at the skeptical side. The skeptical side even said they were about to lose their contract. Yeah. That would be a motive for faking a elaborate event. Now, personally, I do believe he was abducted. I do, too. I do not believe everything happened as he said it did on the ship. Because mm-hmm. I, I can't believe that if they it was a, um alien, like human to rat type right. of science experiment, mm-hmm. that they would allow him to come back and express that to the other rats. <laughs> Dude! Well, if, you can't, if you can't control, I mean, our own government can't control UFOs. Yeah, they can't, um, and, you know, and even uh, and we'll we'll talk about this on a whole other show, uh, and we'll nitpick. That's just because they haven't sent Maverick up there, right? But he's coming back. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> we watched Top Gun the other night uh-huh. <laughs> with the kids. <laughs> but no, we're we're gonna nitpick the whole CIA uh, release of national security and UFOs. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll do we'll do that on another show. Um, down the road, uh, but I think people uh, give government. That, that, that's what fucking. kills me is they, they say UFOs don't pose a national security threat. Well, there's been documented cases of UFOs going over our own missile silos and disabling them. How is that not and going nuclear? over the White House? Huh? Going over the White House? How come hey, they're the only okay. ones that are allowed so to fly over that? No, no, no. Yeah. Here's the thing. That's not a national security threat. They went over and they turned that shit off. Now, if they'd armed it and shot it, there's a national security threat. No, the threat. national security threat part of that is the fact that they could do it. Yeah, they could turn else it can off. What else do? Obviously. But that, that's the problem. That's, that's not that's a threat. The thing. That's not a threat. That's a peace action. That, that's mm-hmm. the issue with our idea of a national security threat. Right. If something comes and turns something off, that doesn't mean they can turn it back on. It doesn't. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. It doesn't. But it also doesn't mean that they're a threat. Because if they're coming and they're taking away our capability of killing each other, is that a threat or is that an olive branch? Because I got a question. Let's let's go to 1952. Well, no, hold on a second. Okay. Can we set off an atom bomb? Yeah. Okay, can we stop one? No. From exploding? No, not that I'm aware of. So we can turn it off on... But we, we can't, can't turn, turn it, it off. off. No, it's the same thing. Dropped. <laughs> yeah, but like, it, it's the same so thing. to say they can turn it off, but they can't turn it on. I bet they could. Maybe. Tractor beam. But why would they want yeah. to? Every yeah. one well, of these things. Why would they go things. to Russia and do the same thing then? Huh? So we, I guess we don't know. They're why interfering would they go to Russia in human Because things? we wouldn't know if they did. Yeah, true. Yeah, we would never get told. <laughs> so, 1952, we had a whole fleet of UFOs that went right over the White House with radar return. Did they kill anyone? No, they were saying, hi, we're here. What the fuck are you going to do about it? Were they, they saying, have. what the fuck are you going to do about have. it? They might have. Saying... Maybe they were on the grassy knoll. <laughs> But that's nope. what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that something can be considered a threat is if it's actually threatening. 
I think the threat comes from the fact that we can't stop them. Yeah, but we couldn't stop a human if they decided they were going to really do something. 9-11 and every other thing like that proved that. Yeah. So, there's no threat if they're not violent. If they're a completely non-violent species and they come okay, here so and they... that race is non-violent. What about when the reptilians come down? Oh, God. Just saying. I don't believe in the reptilians. Really? I really don't. But the reptilians believe in you, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be here tonight for saying that. For an... Mm-hmm. And so, folks, this was actually only two points. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Is that this is only two points of about five pages of questions that I had to bring up. So, oh, yeah, it's going to be a fun. Next Wednesday. Oh, every Wednesday. <laughs> Join us every Wednesday night. We are going to pick apart. That was bad. That was terrible. That was, was bad. Terrible. I'm sorry. So <clears throat> I'm not saying it's aliens, Enjoy but it's probably so, actually no. humans. Bam. I'm not saying it's humans, but it's definitely not aliens. Right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back with you next Wednesday at 10 p.m. So come join us. And for anyone that's listening, tell your friends. Fuck. Come on. Wednesday, Jesus Wednesday, Christ. Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> for, an, oh, for all of our listeners in Canada, for an, uh, enjoy your long weekend for Victoria Day. And, Happy um, Victoria Day. Remember, cheer on those flames for this Battle, Battle of Alberta. Of Alberta. Yeah. <laughs> for an, Go Flamers. Even Wayne Gretzky's cheering for the flames, so that should tell you something. <laughs> the aliens are going after him now. <laughs> all right, let's get our asses back in the bunker. Good night, everyone. Uh. Data transfer complete. System malfunction. Please evacuate immediately. Program terminated. Son of a biscuit eater.